This is indeed an, an A-list Washington evening, and to underscore the importance that the council places on education, the first award will be for Educator of the Year, and it will be presented by board men member Bob Pence. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bob Pence, and I'm pleased to be here on behalf of the World Affairs Council of Washington, D.C., to present to Michelle Ree, the Chancellor of the District of Columbia Public Schools, our award as, indeed, Educator of the Year. The people who know me expect I'm gonna say something either about Dante or Cicero, so. <laughs> I'm gonna make it Dante tonight in two respects. <laughs> First, <clears throat> when he starts his great poem, The Divine Comedy, he's lost. He can't find his way, he's obviously the border of hell, in fact, finds himself in it, and he needs someone to lead him away, a teacher. In fact, he will come before he survives through purgatory and paradise. In fact, he'll have four teachers. Virgil's is first, he leaves. Beatrice comes along. Another Roman poet, Statius, um, takes him a little further, and then uh, St. Bernard takes him the last part of the way. The choice of four is interesting. I'm not going to dwell on it. I'm going to do you a favor. Um, but it's very Ciceronian in that the great Roman orator Cicero um, was very concerned about teachers, about the idea that there is one teacher that one should turn one's children over to for an all-encompassing education, which is to say Cicero, like Dante the poet, who makes Dante the, the pilgrim, the beneficiary of having four great teachers. And in this process of education, as a great critic by the name of Charles Singleton said in, in an essay, Vistas in Retrospect, he says it's only later in life that we come to understand the significance of events as they occur. Very seldom are we wise enough, attuned enough, alert enough to understand the importance of what's happening around us at the moment. And that is probably particularly true with respect to teachers, if we think back about the great teachers we've had. Fortunately, if you have two or three, it's magnificent. But we are indeed here tonight to honor Michelle Ree, who was born in Ann Arbor, Michigan, was raised in Toledo, Ohio, and she has two daughters, Olivia and Star. She's a graduate of Cornell University with a degree, undergraduate degree in government and earned a master's public policy at the John F. Kennedy School of Government at Harvard. This award is given, the Educator of the Year Award, to recognize one who has shown such extraordinary leadership, personal accomplishment, and as evidence of her, or his, this year her, ongoing commitment to the educational process. She understands the importance of working with unions, with working um, with nonprofits such as ourselves, and indeed with the DC government system at large, which for those of you who are residents of the city as I am, is an interesting challenge at times. <laughs> so without further ado, I'd like to welcome she, Michelle Reed tonight, If I may very briefly recite that the World Affairs Council, Washington, D.C., presents to Michelle Ree, Chancellor, District of Columbia Public Schools, the Educator of the Year Award in and Recognition of Outstanding Educational Leadership. Michelle, congratulations on behalf. <laughs> Thank you. First of all, I need to note that usually when I am standing in front of a crowd this large at this time of night, I'm getting yelled at. 
um, with sometimes things thrown at me, and so uh, to be in a friendly environment is, is sort of nice for a change. Um, I will say that in my two years here in the district, I've gotten an incredibly um, warm welcome from the entire community, and it's, it's funny because oftentimes when I'm out on the weekends at, at grocery stores and restaurants, I have people, usually women, who come up to me and they say, are you okay? <laughs> so this is to say, yes, I am, I'm great. Um, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, I, I actually love my job. I can't think of anything that would be more exciting or more fulfilling to do than to ensure uh, that the children of Washington, D.C. get the education they deserve. Um, but I will say that it's, it's, I'm a little sheepish up here getting an Educator of the Year Award because usually for such awards you have to have said, I accomplished this huge feat. Um, and we still have so incredibly far to go um, before we can say that we're providing the children of this city with an excellent education. If you look at any of the data points um, about the academic achievement levels of our children, it is startling. Um, we have uh, about a 70 percentage point achievement gap in the city between our white children and our black children. Of all of the ninth graders who begin high school with us, only 9% uh, of them graduate from college. And of all of our eighth graders, according to the National uh, Assessment of Education Progress, only 8% of our eighth graders are on grade level in mathematics, 12% in reading. Which means that 92% of our young people do not have the skills and knowledge necessary to be productive members of society. So that gives you a sense of the challenges that we face on a day-to-day -day basis here uh, in the District of Columbia Public Schools. But all that said, we also have a tremendous amount of confidence about our ability to completely transform this school system. Um, and under the leadership of Mayor Fenty, we absolutely believe it's gonna be possible to do so and do so in a relatively short amount of time. Um, our aspiration is to ensure that our children can compete in the global marketplace, not just that we get a little better and that we improve, because like I said, 8% of our kids are proficient you double that and you're still only at 16%. So improvements aren't enough. What we need is to see a sea change in what the, um, the actual educational outcomes of our children are. Um, and we want to make sure, because we believe that our children have the potential to compete with the most talented young people across the entire globe. And I think now, especially during this time when the, the government is talking a lot about sort of bailouts and economic stimulus packages and that sort of thing, what we can't lose sight of is the fact that in order to solve the long problems that our country faces, we have to invest and make prior the pr number one priority of this country public education. We have to improve what we're doing in our schools every day. It, if we don't fix public education, we are not going to be able to ensure that this country regains its, its status and position uh, in the global economy. Um, and I, I just want to say that we are so thankful to the World Affairs Council for all of the work that they do with our schools, with our children, to make sure that we can tap into resources, initiatives, and programs that prepare our children, again, to compete with the best youngsters anywhere in the world. So thank you very much.